Hey everyone, it's Terry Cutler, and I've got the privilege of sitting next to Eric Parent, another cybersecurity expert here in Montreal. And we're having a, a conference today. We're talking about the need to change the way we function in cybersecurity. We want to be able to move away from the social insurance numbers that protects consumers' identity, right? So maybe you could talk about a bit some of the stuff you've suggested on what they should be doing to move away from this. Right, well, one of the fundamental things is that social insurance numbers are embedded in everything. Right. So everybody's using them. However, there's also been data leaks of your social insurance numbers repeatedly over and over and over again, on top of the fact that you've handed this number out pretty freely to anybody yeah. you've worked for, any, any credit card application, any bank and, you know, account you've opened. So, so it's really not a secret piece of information. On top of it, your own family has access to it. So a disgruntled family member has access to it, et cetera, et cetera. So as a basis for identity, it's a terrible piece of information. So if we move away from that, then that means that when we'll have a breach, like a Desjardins or anywhere else, when you have a breach, we're gonna say, yeah, okay, you know, instead of saying, ah, oh, crap, you know, my, my social insurance number has been exposed once again, yeah. and people are gonna open up a bank account under my name. Right. No, you can't do that if you put in digital ID that's governed by the government, and right. et cetera, et cetera. Right, that's what we're seeing, right, obviously with Capital One and, and, and these other data breaches. In fact, our, our social insurance number went on the web yet again, and at, at this point, uh, cyber guys are thinking, well, okay, well, it's already available, right? So for us, it's not a huge surprise, but for the average consumer, they're like, oh my God, they're gonna recreate my identity. We need, we need credit monitoring from a company who's already been hacked and providing you monitoring service from a company they already own. Right, and, and eventually, and also, well, the, the companies, they're gonna monitor you, but they're gonna alert you that you've had your identity stolen. Right. It's not preventing. By then it's too late. So by then it's too late, there's corrective actions that need to be taken, it's a painful process, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and, and security experts, yourself, myself, everybody, keeps being asked by you know, my journalists all the time, what can what can the citizen do? And it's a tough question. So by default, we'll say, well, they need to try to secure their social insurance. Change your password. And change your password, <laughs> exactly. Which is all common sense, but telling people to secure their social insurance number when it's been out there for so long is actually pointless. You well, there's nothing they can do. I mean, the consumer, the consumer is a sitting duck, right? I mean, they're 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 waiting for they're they're, they're entrusting these organizations with their personal information and their social and such. And then we find out folks like Equifax that had such poor security, like you could like convenience store quality right. security. And well, they didn't, didn't they invest? I think they invested 170 million to bring the security up to a, well, I guess, Whoa. a good level. But that means they were 170 million behind. That's right. right. So, yeah, they're playing catch up now. Already they got caught with their pants down. Now it's like, oh, we better get up, get up to speed. And you know, we're seeing it's a, tr it's, it's a multi-trillion dollar industry for the cyber criminals right now in cybersecurity. So the 160 million investment means nothing. Right, because they're not, they're not, the attackers are not going after your technology. They're just going to go after your users and have them click on a link they're not supposed to and maybe get you infected with ransomware. Right, but once again, they already have your personal profile, they already have all that information. That's right. So identity theft is going to start happening or continue happening based on that. If we put in a digital ID and a digital authentication system that goes with it, yeah. then you're trying to change it because that's why I keep talking about penalties or personal penalties. Penalties that are attributed to the people who are actually doing or making the mistakes or contributing to the negligence. So if your security is negligent, why wouldn't somebody be actually held accountable? And that's why I want the laws to change. I, yeah. want, I want penalties because laws with no penalties, is just, it becomes a recommendation, that's right? It. So if there's penalties and for neglect, and that's one thing, but what about penalties if somebody does actually give somebody a credit card to the wrong person? I mean, that's neglect also. Of course. So if you have penalties there, personal penalties, then, then the system may actually auto-regulate and auto-clean itself. You know, it'll yeah. be a self-cleaning oven. It'll actually start going right. in the right direction. I think they're, they're testing the new credit cards in the UK where it has uh, uh, numbers that, that change every, every couple of seconds. So that's, that's possibly going to be uh, the future of credit cards. But you know, we, you know, we've seen countless times where we walk into our organization, we know that their cybersecurity is terrible. We try to pitch them a service to come at least audit them, show them proof, and they'll always, a lot of times they'll come around saying, no, we, don't, we have everything under control, our IT guys say we're fine, and then they get breached, 
and it costs them like thirty to one hundred thousand bucks just to clean up our ransomware. Right. Well, normally what happens is they see that there's a price associated to it, yeah. and it's not just five hundred dollars. So then they say, oh no, everything's okay. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be all right. And then it turns out that they're not all right because none of them are. And that's why personally, in my enterprise, we usually don't do business at all with traded companies because we know that there's a chain of command. Everybody's there to protect themselves, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, so there's a bunch of liars, if you will, that are in the whole chain, right? No. So yeah, can you imagine lying people in lying corporate people. environments? Uh, Career-oriented people are backstabbing each other or covering things up. You know, that actually happens all the time. That's just terrible. So yeah, that's that's the facts of life, right? Yeah. So how do we? How can we, as cyber experts, because you know we're, we're three million personnel short in our industry, right? We can't help you all. Okay. So we're, we're trying our best to provide even free guidance, guys. Here's what you got to do for your basic security to make sure this doesn't happen to you. But here's the key, though. You just said it. We are actually still saying. Basic stuff. Yeah, it's basic. So, because when you go to a breach, what's usually the, usually before you walk in, you already have a good idea what happened. Yeah. And when you walk in, you just confirm what you already sort of doubted. It's like, oh yeah, how do we go again? You know, it's the same three or four root causes. Yeah. And they're basic, yeah. right? So, so what can we do as, as a society or as a group of security experts is actually just try everybody to realize that they're not meeting the minimum. And to, to make courses available like you do and, uh, and like, like we're trying to do now with, with the journalists is offer them some form of training so that they can actually see yeah. through the, the smoke and mirrors because yeah. uh, people who are out there representing the companies, for example, will put up press releases and you know, you look at them and you say, what the heck is that? Yeah. I mean, you can also check, I mean, for you IT guys watching right now, if you go into your Active Directory and see how many users still are existing in your Active Directory that haven't worked for your company <laughs> for more than two years, you know, we still see this. We see accounts that are active, and the IT guy, wow, I didn't know that was still there, and the account logged in, but he hasn't been here in multiple years. Right. Yeah. Password quality also. Oh, we're still, I can't believe we're still hounding that. So in our services, we actually still test for that because we're always finding bad passwords. And uh, one of our big clients, we, we did it uh, every three months, and the, I think the fourth or fifth month, we just said, okay, it's not gonna work. Yeah. You know, we've got thousands of users and there's always a couple hundred left that have terrible password. And they changed it from summer 2018 to summer 2019. Hey, I yeah, changed it. You know? Yeah. That's so exactly. we actually had them put in a product. We found a product that was pretty inexpensive that integrates into Active Directory. And they put this in there and it, it actually sanitizes this and controls that. Wow. And it actually does something really cool that, that technical people may appreciate. If you, if you, depending on the length of the password you pick voluntarily, it'll set the expiry longer. So oh, if you pick a 25 character password, it'll expire once a year. If you pick a 10, 10 character password, it'll expire in 30 days or whatever. So it sort of makes itself cleaning also. Yeah. And so we have to end up using technical tricks because the re-education of people, you, you, you just can't win. Like in a small group, maybe 10 employees, you'll win. Yeah. But in you know 3,000 employees, there's always going to be 200 stragglers that keep repeating the same bad behavior. Yeah. So security awareness is great. Yeah. You, know, you do need technical controls. So uh, The other problem with, we're seeing a lot of too, especially with ransomware, we're seeing a, a big uptick right now in cyber in, in the ransomware, your backups are not properly secured, right? So the ransomware gets in, it encrypts your backups, and you're toast. You have no right. way to pay. You have nothing to do but to pay the yeah. ransom. I've seen I've seen two scenarios where they, they delete the backups or, or they, uh, they they sabotage them actually a couple of weeks ahead of time, let you progress. You know your backups aren't actually running. You know they're running. They look like they're running, but they're not. Uh, or they just delete them or what have you. So all these scenarios are actually happening now because yeah. the people are taking the time to take a look. And by taking a look, they also understand sort of what the company does. So right. instead of asking, remember originally they were asking for a thousand bucks or five hundred dollars. Yeah. That day is long gone now. Now they take a look and they say, wait a minute, I've got myself a whole bunch of data here. I got so many hundreds of thousands of Excel spreadsheets. Let's ask for $100,000. That's right. So the game's changing for sure. Yeah. So anything more we want to talk about? Well, I, I think that sort of covers it in my, in my view because if, if you put in penalties, then it becomes self-regulating. You know, it doesn't have to be har harsh penalties for small companies because some people will be worried about that. They'll say, yeah. well, what about the small companies? Those aren't the ones that are usually the ones that are huge, you know, hugely at fault, right? The big companies, as we see in the news every day, yeah. are constantly dropping the ball. So we could have a penalty model as long as it touches senior management, the ones who are supposed to be responsible when they're negligent. Yeah. Uh, when you have proof and evidence that they're negligent, uh, if you have a penalty model that's modulated based on the size of the company, then you know a small company may be fined thousand dollars, whereas the CEO, CEO who's making a high you know, to twenty million dollars a year may be fined five hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars. This way, it says you know clean your act, get get it done. Uh, right now, it's not really on the radar. It's on the radar when there's a breach, of course, and uh, yeah, it's too late. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's why. That's why you know we can help you with you know very inexpensive audits compared to what it's going to cost you when you get breached you know the the, the starting price to clean your your, your ransomware up is like 30,000 bucks it can easily go to 140,000 even 140,000 US 
Okay, so it goes very quick. But give us a call and we'll be able to help you with at least a small audit, kind of like a blood test. You know, here's your results, here's your scorecard, and it shows you if you if you really need help or not. And if you're a business owner, the IT guys will usually try to cover their ass by saying, yeah, yeah, everything's fine, we don't need no cybersecurity people. Uh, but we're not there to, you know, make them look like fools or, or try to get them fired. The reality, you know, that's a very good point. So the reality with that is that they, they don't have the competence that's to right. see how complex they're, they're they're beside the, the track, of course, or they're beside the target. So it's not that they're bad people, they're probably great people. It's yeah. just that when you call in an expert, then you're supposed to milk that. So sure, you do the audit, but while you're doing the audit, you're identifying the root causes. That's right. And you're training your people to understand and say, oh yeah, okay, we, we, didn't, we didn't think about that. Yeah. And, or we weren't thinking that way, or That's we right. didn't understand that the threat actors actually act that way and they do it that That's way. Right. Uh, I actually had an IT company not that long ago called me up and they had been hit, got hit by ransomware and encrypted all their, all their backups, encrypted everything. They had offline backups, but since they wanted to be regulatory compliant, they were encrypting their backups <laughs> with, with encryption keys. The encryption keys were still on, on the server and they got encrypted. Oh, so so, so the last go. seven years of backups was now worthless, you know? But uh, a security analyst will come in, ask a few questions and say, oh, oh, oh wait a minute, you, you can't do that. You know, that's a bad that's idea. It. And then they would have corrected it and it would have cost, what, a lunch? <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> it's not like a, it's not a 40 day mandate. Right? That's it. And, and, and the misconception is that, oh, we're not being targeted. No one's going to want to hack me, you know? And, and, and it's so... It's you know, so you know they're, they're right though. They're targeting everybody and they'll happen to cross you. That's right. And it's like if somebody decides I'm going to run over the next person on the street and you're walking down the street saying, well, nobody wants to run me over. Yeah, you're technically right. But what if that one lunatic is driving by, you know? So the, the technically enterprises, small enterprises, medium enterprises aren't really targeted. Everybody's targeted. That's it. It's like so a big you're going to get hit and then they don't know who they got. They don't care who they got. That's they got it. somebody. They got so much data. They can ask for 100,000. And yeah. what's the percentage right now? 60 or 70 percent have to pay up. That's it. Because they have poor backups. And, anyway, and not just that. When you're when you get hit with a ransomware, just so you know, you're down for at least a hundred hours. Okay, so nobody can work at this point. You got to bring in possibly other IT people come and help rebuild the the environment because if your backups are encrypted, you got to pay for the ransom, right? So maybe it could be fifteen, a hundred thousand bucks for that ransom key, and and then once once it's, your data is decrypted, now you can't trust your environment anymore, yeah, right? Rebuild. So you got you still got to rebuild everything, but also just decrypting. You know, the, the encryption was done slowly, cautiously. Now you're trying to decrypt everything. That's it. And you're going to want that done, done that fast. You do it fast, but you, you can't do it that fast. because no way. There's limitations with the technology. Same with your backups. Yeah. If you have valid backups, if 200 servers get encrypted, yeah. it could take you three weeks to bring all that back. Well, that's it. They think, oh yeah, I got, I got cloud storage backup. Okay, but <laughs> the download Good luck is, all that. It could take a week to restore your data. So you, during that time, nobody can work. So there's a lot of cost exactly. when you get hit with this. And, if you would have done your audit beforehand, it would have cost a fraction of what you're about to pay. Right, especially because people keep making the same basic mistakes. So if you should at least threaten, pass that threshold of yep. not making basic mistakes, That's it. then you can worry about getting better, et cetera, et cetera. But right now we're seeing a lot of basic mistakes. If you'd like to have a consultation with us, our numbers will be down below on the, on the, on the screen. So we look forward to hearing from you and then uh, we'll see you soon.